Hello, I'm Lynn McGarvey. This video will give you a quick overview of the Pearson learning progression for kindergarten to grade three. What it is, how it works, and how it can help you in your day-to-day -day life as a teacher. So, what is the learning progression? It's a research-based framework that provides the backbone for the mathology teaching resources. It's also intended to be a teacher-friendly tool that I hope will meet two important needs. One, is to provide content knowledge of the concepts, skills, and procedures of early years mathematics. And two, to increase understanding of how students develop mathematical thinking over time. In the development of this tool, we had three principles in mind. Mathematics is an interconnected network of ideas. It is not a collection of rules, procedures, and formulas to be memorized. Mathematics learning involves an expansion of the network of ideas and an increase in the density of connections within that network. It is not simply an accumulation of knowledge. And finally, learning is dependent on how students make connections between learning experiences, both past and present. The roots of the learning progression lie in an extensive review of research, and in particular, literature related to progressions, pathways, and continuums of learning that have been developed over past the past decade in mathematics education. Regardless of the term used, this body of research builds on an understanding of the common paths of mathematics learning, the interconnected structure of mathematics, and also the way curriculum has traditionally been sequenced. In general, the learning progression is a synthesis of research, professional development frameworks, and curriculum across Canada. Let's take a look at how the learning progression is structured. It's built on this framework. Strands, big ideas, conceptual threads, and indicators. We used five common strands of mathematics, so it'll be easy for you to see your curriculum in the progression. The progression has 13 big ideas, with five of these in the number strand, two for patterning and algebra, two for measurement, three for geometry, and one for data management and probability. Conceptual threads provide the next layer of organization. These threads fall under the big ideas and may cross into other strands. They represent the network of ideas that span the early years. You'll see actions such as composing, comparing, partitioning, estimating, and classifying, but there's other actions as well. The conceptual threads link the indicators that are outlined next. It's here, the indicators, where you'll likely focus the most. Indicators represent concepts, skills, and mathematical ideas in an order that most students encounter. Looking at how the indicators are arranged allows you to see how concepts grow over time and in complexity. There's two things to note about the indicators. First, learning processes such as problem solving and communicating are assumed to be part of every indicator so you won't see them listed separately or necessarily even referred to in the indicators. Second, while indicators may look like outcomes or expectations, the intent is different and they shouldn't be used for assessment check marks. We'll look next at their place in the teaching practice. How you'll use the learning progression is really your choice. Here are some ways that you might find helpful. One, the learning progression gives you an overview of the mathematics learning at the primary level. You can track growth and development over time in terms of both your students' learning and the mathematical concepts they ex are expected to meet in the early years. The shared language of curriculum and the learning progression can help you identify a related outcome or expectation in any indicator. You can see what concepts come before that indicator and what comes next key information to help understand the intent and extent of your curriculum. Finding an indicator that matches your observations of students' understanding can help you identify where they may be on the progression, their potential learning gaps, what you can do to consolidate learning, and where they are expected to go next. Four, some students are ready for more advanced learning. The progression can help you plan learning for these students as well, all the while staying within the same conceptual thread. The indicators can also help teachers assess student work and monitor learning over time. Most importantly, the learning progression helps you assess and differentiate for individual learning needs. 
Well, that wraps up the video. Thanks for taking the time to watch it. We hope it's helped you understand a little bit more about the learning progression, what it is, how it works, and how it can help you in the classroom.